That means it's six o'clock. That means it's Bar Talk Tuesday, and we are live for Bar Talk Tuesday. I'm Matthew. That's Mark. Producer Jess is behind the scenes, and welcome to the bar. We are at one of our favorite places in Miramar, San Diego, California, Duck Foot Brewing Company. Your first time here. First time. We, before the pandemic, used to be regulars down here. Events, now they have back in action. We got comedy nights opening up around here. I'm telling you, this is the place to be. And everything, said it, meant it, right here on Bar Talk <laughs> is fantastic down at the Duckfoot. Come on down right here. How's it been so far, my guy? I can't complain. This beer is delicious. Hops to the third degree. We're both drinking it. Or the third power, yep. I believe is what it's called. Hops Outstanding the West mm -hmm. Coast IPA. Um, so good, I'm almost out. So uh, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> need to pace myself a little bit. But it's amazing. We've got a great tour here. Uh, learned about some of the special limited beers that they made. You yeah. know, during COVID, we're sitting next to all the tanks. Um, they got a full crowd here. An amazing taco shop. Uh, out, or we got an amazing fit, like taco. What do you call that? Taco food truck. truck? Yeah, they yeah. have a crazy special. You had on. some amazing tacos. Mike's barbecue. Welcome. Yeah, oh so, god. Yeah, this is hopping. And it's awesome, so it's really cool to be here. Hip hip hooray, man. Bar Talk Tuesday. Bar Talk Tuesday. The taco deal he's talking about? Two beers. Order at the front. My guy outside. I haven't even caught the name of the taco truck yet because he just delivered it inside. I got the beers. Welcome, Stacy, Brian. Two beers, two fish tacos for 20 bucks. You're Can't not finding that. that around no. here, my guy. It's That's fantastic. a heck of a deal. Come on down next time, next Taco Tuesday, support local Duckfoot Brewing Company down here in Miramar. With that being said, how the heck are you, my guy? Since I, last Bar Talk Tuesday, I know that you've been extremely busy. It's been crazy. How are you? Doing great, man. Started little, the move last a little, week. A little sore, yeah. Uh, this past Saturday, man, it was chock full of craziness. Uh, got the entire garage moved by like 7.30 in the morning. Um, the back was officially shot by 745, mm -hmm. but it didn't <laughs> stop about me. right. We had the amazing uh, release of Frasis con Crema over at Savage Wood mm -hmm. before my brother and sister-in-law um, had a formal ceremony down at Sacred Heart in Coronado, hung out, did dinner down there, mm -hmm. lunch the next day with my dad and my mom and, the, and Mark and Lily and Stacy and Trey, so... Yeah, it's been crazy and working and trying to get this place ready for the new place. We got the movers coming Saturday. So, yeah, it's crazy. It's nice just to be here and, uh, hey man. you know, not thinking about that for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about it. He needs it. I need it, definitely. I know producer Jess needs it. And I know you need it, too. Right here every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, we're here to talk bar. We're here to talk sports. We're talking life. And you were talking about the wedding. Today, we're talking weddings. Amazing. So, we'll get into that in a little bit. Anything else crazy around the house? Stacy came back from the East Coast. Yep. Hey, Nave, welcome to the bar. She's been back a couple weeks. We're getting Lily ready now. She's gone uh, I, next next bar talk Tuesday. She's out. Yeah. So, and then you're gone the following she's back one, right? To school. Um, yes. Whatever the week of the fifth is yeah. of September. Um, that's when the ceremony is in Michigan for Brian and Brittany. So, uh, Stacy, Trey, and I will fly out after his football game on that Thursday. So, gotcha. Um, yeah, we're excited, man. We're looking forward to it. It was really fun to meet the, like her side of the family or, um, her mom, um, and her stepdad and her sister. So, uh, it was cool, man. It was a yeah. lot of fun. Family time. It's yeah. important, especially after that turd that was 2020 huh <laughs> you ain't kidding <laughs> jesse you have had a crazy week i'll share a little bit about what's been going on in the old uh 3g chef dad household i guess if you will all of our companies now during covid have centralized in our house anyway uh jesse owns a food company you know that we constantly are making beautifully fresh salsas Delicious out of the house salsas. and now she has expanded the menu 
We're doing tamales, right, Jesse? Uh, carne, carnitas, carne, chicken, pineapple, vegetarian, pineapple and strawberry. Dude, the strawberry wow. and the pineapple, little dessert style. How about any delicious. chili relleno? Ooh. Oh. Yeah. We'll be the vegetarian with a chili relleno. Yeah. Mm. Reg relleno. I'm pretty sure I pronounced it correctly, Jessica. Relleno. <laughs> so we've been busy cooking. And also, a byproduct has been created out of the Organic Chef Dad Food Kitchen, which is now dog food. Dog food? You yeah. what? <laughs> wow, right on, we're doing man. dog food too. We we're purchasing organic, natural dog food for our little Zamboni at home. Yes, we treat her like a baby. And this cat thing we call a dog named Haji. <laughs> and uh, we said, man, this is really expensive. Let's check the ingredients. Let's get, and we could just do it for so much cheaper. We know we can help other people out there. So my product, Chef Dad Food Company, my girl Jessie, right back there. Right on. Non-stop busy in the kitchen. We tried to go up to Universal Studios on Monday. That didn't work out. Had some traffic and car issues. Ended up turning around, long story wow. short. We had our kids' first football games last weekend. Yes, we that did. That was busy and fun. Um, Jesse had a garage sale this past weekend. We got sold quite a few things. It was great. Wow. Just cleaning house, man. Now that the companies are moving into the house, you got to make space for <laughs> stuff. The kids are getting older, don't need that stuff. So we made quite a bit of money there. But here was the highlight since uh, I've seen you last time. You know what happened to me on Friday? I go outside to walk the dog. Check out my Instagram, Guy's Guide to a Great Life. That, that giant rattlesnake? Four-foot rattlesnake. Yeah. You're out of your mind. Oh, my God. Dude. Talk about Pucklefractor. Huh? Ugh! So I'm walking the dog, the neighbor's staring at something. I'm like, what is going on over here? He's like, hey, be careful. Keep that dog away from it. He's got his dog staying away. Four foot rattlesnake cruising through one of those drainage dits, ditches. It came up a couple times, wrapped in a coil. Uh -uh. Looked at me twice, all that. Friend of the snake world, this guy is. We had the thing, the eye, <laughs> and he slithered away. But nonetheless, scary, Friend man. of the snake world. <laughs> Four foot rattlesnake was the crazy highlight of the weekend. Dude. Hey, San Diego natives, watch out for the snakes. It's snake season. It's great. Anyway, so crazy week, man. <sighs> Nonetheless, we talk about our weeks. We talk about life. We also talk about the best things we're eating and sipping throughout the week. Best beer and bite of your week, my guy. What you eating on and what you sipping on? Man, I drank a lot of stuff celebrating this weekend, right? Um... But I gotta tell you, the thing I was most excited about was the El Puerquito Hard Fresca Fresas con Crema release at Savage Wood on Saturday at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. Again, I told you we had a lot going on, but we did our bar talk, uh, what, three, four weeks ago from there. It yep. was awesome. And that's when we met Ernesto mm -hmm. and he told us all about his hard frescas. And you had told me about the Tamarindo one. And then he pulls out the glasses. He's like, these are still a couple weeks away. I was like, I don't know what the hell this is. <laughs> yes. But I thought about it every day for three weeks. I'm like, I don't, so good. I don't normally do the sweet, seltzer -y drinks. I, I just don't. And I still don't know what that is. You're a hophead. I do. I prefer hops. I love my stouts, a good Belgian. But I haven't really, you know... I'm trying to find a sour that's great. I'm excited tonight to try one here. Um, but, like, going off the thing into, like, the lighter ABVs and the fruity just hasn't been my deal. So right. trying that, amazing. Saw you guys and everybody over there. Got some pictures. Had it off the tap. Had it in the can. Again, had a lot of great things over this weekend. That, by far, was still the thing that stays with me best thing i drank so kudos to that team over there and i know it's a one-man team and he's he's got guys helping with his social media and photos and but my god delicious refreshing fresas con crema mm -hmm. not only is Support it fun local. to say it's delicious <laughs> to drink <laughs> check check out online go over there find them at savage wood i know they've got them in the uh, case over there 
El Porquito Strawberry Crema Frescas? That's what right? it is. He was talking even about it. con crema. Strawberries with cream. He was talking about it even before the show. Jesse says hard, it's hard. Aguas. Aguas. aguas Frescas. Pretty sure I pronounced that correct. I still don't know what that means, but I love saying it. Delicious. So that was your best beer sip oh, of the week? Oh, yeah. It, now, kudos. I had an incredible jalapeno mm. um, habanero margarita at the Henry in Coronado Saturday night. Yeah. That thing was outstanding. They use uh, habanero slices and habanero liqueur in it. Ooh. So, yeah, dude, it had I a like nice that. little kick. I love that. But fresas con crema. Best sip of the Edged week. Edged it out. Yeah, it sounds better out of my mouth. El Porquito. Check them out online. Yeah. Right here in San Diego. My best sip of the week, honorable mention to my girl Jessica, made a mango lemonada. Limonada. Limonada. I'm pretty wow. sure I pronounced that correctly. Okay. <laughs> Limonada. That was fantastic. I know. I don't know what's going on with the Spanish tonight. But anyway, the best sip of my week, I shared it with you a while ago and I went back to it. Hands down, by far, the best sip of my week before I was over here at Duckfoot. Thanks a lot, Mike, for serving me this fantastic thing. I already had this written down, nonetheless. Wild Barrel Brewing Company, Uncle Sam's on the juice. Oh, this juice bomb just hit the palate. It's been hotter than <clears throat> in San Diego today. Yes, sir. I ran out of gold bond. It's been so hot around here. Whoa. <laughs> but... Wild Barrel Brewing Company, love them over there. They usually do mostly sours and whatnot. Yeah. But, hey, their beer hop but program is great too. Outstanding IPA out of a place yeah. that really prides themselves on sours. Yeah. Outstanding IPA. Uncle if you Sam's still on find the juice. It, grab it. It there won't it be there long. <laughs> so that was my best sip of the week. What were you eating on this week? Man, I ate. You won't believe this. I ate on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Go figure. You um, ate all three days all you ate this All three days man. I ate food. And all three days, man, I had something great. So I told you we've been rocking this um, vegan cookbook, right? Yeah. Stacy has this recipe for Tucson mushrooms, bro. They may be called t Tuscan mushrooms. I don't know. But the gravy that they're in. Spinach, sun-dried tomato, um, portobello mushrooms some smaller carminis in there but she makes it's a sauce that it all cooks in dude i can knock out half a loaf of sourdough just mm. sopping up the sauce so stace those mushrooms are amazing delicious that is in a three-way tie okay yes same I, cookbook no okay completely off the vegan machine uh i had some incredible raw oysters um at steak in Coronado. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they were amazing. They were from New Zealand. Super, super sweet, like needed nothing. Um, so it was nice to eat those. I don't get those a lot. And then um, that night for dinner, dude, you're going to think this is crazy. Almost the best hummus I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Again, at the Henry with that margarita. Lebanese hummus. What's the difference between a I wish I knew dude. other hummus? I will tell you I'm a big fan of chickpeas and garbanzo bean, Me basically too. the base of any hummus. And you'll also always get a little tahini mm -hmm. or whatever they put in there. You know, you could get it fresh with garlic or red pepper, whatever. Dude, this came with like a um, veggie side and some warm pita. Yes. And I don't know what made it Lebanese. I don't know if lentils were also mixed in. But, dude, it was so rich. It, I, I mean, it was outstanding. It ate like so a meal. It was a meal. Like, And I'm so glad I did that because it was on the apps thing. And I told the guy, I'm like, hey, dude, that looks too good. He's like, I'll hook you up. And he did, man. <laughs> he brought me up like an urn of this stuff, yeah. dude. I'm just going to town. So, What's the best thing to dip hummus in? Well, me, what it, is to dip it in It depends, man. Hummus. Like, if you have, like, a really nice, fresh, warm pita... I love that, but I'm also a huge pepper guy. Like, I like sliced green peppers or even jalapenos, celery. Mm. Throw that in hummus, man. It's delicious, and you could take and have fun with hummus. Use a um, like celery stalk, cut it in half, 
and fill it full of hummus in the middle. Ants on a log, but dude. hummus style. Oh, so great. What would you dude. replace with the ants? You could do anything, like olive rings. You could throw cranberries olive on there. Rings. If oh, you like pinole nuts, okay. you could throw those in there. I don't do any of that. I like the way you say pinole. Me too. I'm doing a lot of rolling of my R's. And my Spanish and is my on point And my onions are beautiful to yeah. me. Moving on. <laughs> well done, my guy. <laughs> you mentioned the duck <laughs> here at Duckfoot. I'd like to announce this that we were at Savagewood. At Savagewood, we had last week the grand release, if you will, the can release of uh, yes. El Porquito, the strawberry yes. release. Fresas con crema. They had a Mexican uh, food vendor, I guess, right, Jesse? Tacos. Tacos. El Meterero. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that correctly. Jesse goes up to him after her very first taco, says, These are the best tacos I've had in San Diego. Tell me exactly what you're doing. I have it written here because it was my best wow. bite of the week from Savagewood. El Meterero. Check them out on Instagram. I'm telling you. I had the carne asada, I had the carnitas. She had a TJ dog as well and reasonably priced. It was great. There's a ton of tacos here in San Diego. I just had great tacos out here. These were the best of my week. Check them out. You. El Metalero. El Metalero. On Instagram. Yeah. Those dudes are super cool, too. Yeah. Hard rocking yeah. out tacos. Is metalero. it? Is it? Anyway. Best bite of my week. Thanks, guys. You guys are super cool, too. Appreciate talking to you guys. Mark? Yes, sir. Best beer. Best bite of the week. Yep. Moving on to where the passion comes from that drives the show. Passion. We're moving into football. Oh, sports. Yes, of course. How the teams do, bud? Amazing. So, again, told you Saturday was super busy. Did the, get, get the garage stuff knocked out early so that when 10 bills hit, family time, time to root on those Miami Dolphins, baby. I was so excited. Yeah. It was so nice to watch this team. The result wasn't what I wanted. I take the preseason games with a grain of salt. Though. As do I. You got to have the right components to judge those. When Tua didn't have any of his starting receivers play, yep. I was like, okay, this might be tough. It had some great chemistry with the tight ends. Uh, none of our starting cornerbacks played. So I thought it was awesome that for the first half, they held Justin Fields in check. Now, once all of our guys came off, Justin Fields looked really good. Yeah. Chicago was excited, but we got out of it injury-free. Tua looked great except for his pick at the end, but that was correctable, so I'm not really worried about that. I liked the eight passes in a row he completed and his command of the, the offense, his sliding in and out of the pocket. He took two shots that were so aggressive. I don't think he did that all of last year, mm -hmm. so uh, super excited. They start joint practices with the Atlanta Falcons tomorrow. And we play them on Saturday. So uh, super excited, man. Super Just excited. Feels good. That's that a... didn't fall off the table and make a noise. I don't know what did. <laughs> they serve water here at Duckfoot as well that I just knocked off. Thanks to uh, the good people over here. Anyway. The very good people. <laughs> Slightly animated when I talk. Nonetheless, it feels good to be back in front of a TV when football's Football, on TV, man. right? It's, even though it's preseason. Even though it's preseason, it's still amazing to watch it. Yeah. You know? Um, I love it. I'm excited, dude. How's the O-line? A problem. Okay. A problem. So, again, I try not to judge too hard in the preseason, but you know me. I'm a, I'm a trench guy. I watch the O-line. I've got some guys I'm really looking forward to. Um, they played well for the most part. I just don't believe the five that were out there and then thrown together are going to be the dudes come week one against New England. So I'm just going to hold some reservations. Hey, they kept Tua upright. Um, they created a couple blocking lanes that were nice. Um, once it got going, a little bit better for Gaskin and Ahmed, more so than Malcolm Brown. I didn't really love this dude turning around every time he caught a ball. Yeah. Every time he grabbed the ball, he turned his back towards the line. I don't love that. So um, O-line needs some work. But, again, this is what we're doing. This is the time of the year you put that work in. And uh, I'm excited, man. Fins up. How about you? Indy, 
great game. Indy had a fun game. They came back. Uh, didn't look real great. Uh, remember I told you last week and the week before when Carson went down, my guy, North Dakota State yeah. guy, alum, when Carson goes down, I said, hey, don't worry. We got Jacob Eason. What I meant to say in that episode is, have you guys seen this guy named Sam Ellinger? <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Everything out of Indy is saying that Sam's right head, head by head with uh, Jacob trying to fight for that top spot, and I encourage it. At the same time, Carson, hurry back, my guy. You are <laughs> exactly what Colts need to drive this season. So it was fun to watch, though, nonetheless. Um, in that game, everybody was talking about the who's it going to be, and they gave him equal playing time. It was half and half, and the star was Sam. And it felt pretty good to uh, see that. First round, excuse me, not first round, but this year's draft pick. He's a rookie out of Texas this year. A lot of high hopes to put somebody behind Carson that's going to be solid. I don't know if you guys know this about my guy Carson, but uh, some of his joints and limbs are made out of balsa wood. <laughs> so he happens to get hurt a little bit. No offense, Carson, you've been taking a beating. Thanks to those a-holes up in Philly not protecting you. We're going to take care of you in Indy. No big deal. Nonetheless, it was fun to watch. Uh, they came back, won at 21 to 18 in the uh, fourth. So it's kind of fun. Padres news. Let's bring it here to San Diego. Tatis is back, baby. Yes, he is. And he came back with, in full effect. With fire. Friar Nation, here to represent. My guy Tatis comes off of the 10-day, right? <clears throat> His appearance, four for five, right here. Hits Excuse me. Two home runs, drives in three, and four IBR, RBIs by himself. You want to talk about coming back. Do you think it has something to be him sitting in that right field because they moved him out there instead of shortstop? Well, he got to do something to protect his, his arm, right? Like his shoulder. Living here, again, as a Mets fan, I pull for San Diego. They're up against it. They're like we are. You have a superstar player on your team. You're going as far as that guy goes. He's and driving I, the bus. The is driving the bus. And on the Padres, it's Tatis. So this poor guy's like, I'm destroyed, but I'm working with you. Try not to put me in the field, in the infield, where, you know, I'm going to damage my shoulder diving all over the place. Yeah. They worked on him with a strap for his batting so he doesn't let go of the bat and overextend that. He's the most exciting player in baseball. I agree. Okay. And he's got a team that when he plays, their pitching is better. The outfielders and the infielders don't make as many errors. Like, he is, they used to call Daryl Strawberry the straw that made everything, like, he made everything go. If he was healthy and in the lineup, mm -hmm. pitching was better. Tatis is that guy. DeGrom's the same for the Mets. And when those guys are missing for any stretch of time, whoo, boy, does it hurt the team. I will say this. I'm a little bit disappointed that we're not talking about the, at the time, the biggest contract in MLB history, my guy, Manny Machado. Yeah. Number well, 13. Hey, Manny, you've been doing a fantastic job, super consistent all season. Appreciate you. Love you. I just find it a little peculiar that we're not, uh, you know, highlighting a little different so side Manny's of it. So Manny's a little bit older. He's, I want to feel confident that. in the Padres driving the bus with Manny, though. And you, you can. Know? He's just, for whatever reason, man, the energy that when he steps up to the plate just doesn't equal the energy that when Tatis does. That you kid, hear man. it on TV in the stands. Mm. It, watch both of them hit a home run. The loudness from the crowd is just this much more. Right. And I'm not trying to compare them. These guys are obviously friends. I think Manny's done an amazing job acting as like a big brother mentor. Oh, absolutely. You know, a fellow superstar with an up-and-coming great superstar. But Padres go as Fernando Tatis Jr. goes. And you know what? They're up against it. I told you as a Mets fan, we're done. We're finally at 500. We haven't been 500 since May 6th. Mm, We're three and a good. half games back. Last Tuesday, I told you, we hadn't had a four-game losing streak. We've had two four-game losing streaks since I told you that, and oh, that was no. a week ago. Yeah. So, Well, the ground's been out, though, yeah? Still out. They shut him down for another two weeks yesterday, so I hate to say it. Yes, every day, dude, I get in front of that TV, 
whether it's 4, 10, or 7 o'clock out here. And I'm going to watch, hopeful for something else. Mm -hmm. But like the Giants showed last night, we get swept by the Dodgers, and the Giants look like they're priming for the same exact thing. And guess what? We have the Giants and the Dodgers after this series. So Back it's been action. a real kick in the nuts with the Mets, man. Um, I still love them. Thank God for Polar Bear Pete Alonzo. But this team can't hit, and they certainly <laughs> can't hit a fastball. So, Hi, <laughs> Elena. Welcome to the bar. I can't wait. Four more Sundays till Pat's Dolphins, man. How the heck did we get in? me there? Mets guy, Padres guy, sitting here at the bar just... So Get close, me to though. Football, so, man. so close. Yeah. I mean, so much potential. Again, I love my Mets. Realistic, there's no chance. And, like, let's be honest. Are they beating the Giants or the Dodgers? I think you showed a stat when we got destroyed Sunday night baseball by the Dodgers, 39 to 4, or whatever that score was. They showed <laughs> a stat. The last 25 games the Mets have played the Dodgers. Yeah. The Dodgers have won 21 of them. That's not good. That's less than not good. <laughs> so, That's really uh, bad. That was fact. a stink old of rock and roll, but yeah. hey, whatever. Dolphins football. The Padres playing. have the. We two still of them got league. some baseball. Pods are going to keep it exciting. They are. Um, hopefully, the Mets can get hot and take eight, nine in a row from the Dodgers and the Giants and help the Padres out. That we'll help. see, right? We got Baltimore and. Who is it? Chicago. As of today, sitting down here, both in the midst of 12-game losing streaks, entering tonight's action. This is usually the part of the program where I'm like, slump Buster <laughs> McGoy! Uh, I don't think either one of them win tonight. I really think we're going tomorrow. We wake up and they're both have lost 13 in yeah. a row. And I think the Mets going have lost Mets. five in a row. Yeah. So, um... It's a bummer right now, man, but congrats to those players. You know, my brother Pat loves Oakland. They're keeping it exciting for him. I know. My father-in-law's uh, uh, and Stacy are Yankee fans. Yep. They're holding on to hope. Mm -hmm. Sean's a Red Sox fan. He's Boston's excited. back in action. I mean, Golly. Tampa Bay's got to lose for these guys to do something, yep. but we've got some baseball stuff perking, man, and, and it's we're around fun. the corner of baseball season, Correct. and I'm not going to lie. It gets to be a long season. Oh, it's so right? long, dude. 162 games. I was a little bit, I was kind of okay with a little bit of the uh, adjustment last season. Give me an 80-game season. I think that's about right. About half. Wouldn't sure. that be nice? Yeah, about half. Anyway, I know the money doesn't work out that way. But, oh, thank you so much. This is exactly, uh, thank, thank you, you my producer, dear. Jess. Ooh, thank you. Duckfoot Brewing Company. Miramar, San Diego. Support local every time you have a chance. Gluten reduced, gluten free if you ask me, beer right here on the menu. My guy Matt, celiac disease. He says, I'm not the only one that loves to drink beer. I'm gonna put it out to the world. Check them out. Gluten reduced free beer right here at Duckfoot, Miramar. Anyway, moving past sports, a little depressing, however, you know what's not depressing, Mark? Hop Don, dude. He's on. The hey. Hop Don. Hey. Hop. Mr. Eric, the Don himself, has joined us. I got a shout out. This, this is really is, good. This is his favorite beer where they brew it right here. Duckzilla. West Coast IPA. Excuse me. West Coast Double IPA. It's a West Coast It's mixed white, too, right? The white ale. Otherwise known. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. Also known as a Whit beer. My guy's favorite beer. Right they in. make a delicious bunch of beers here. Duckzilla. Right? Really good. And that one's outstanding. I have the tap handle, too. Do you really? Welcome to the bar, Hop. Wow. Welcome to the bar. We have a question from Sean. Give Is it, it to about me. about Tim Tebow? <laughs> no. I hope Sean doesn't ask about Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow's done. Done so. Sean said, he said, did Mark mail my hard press yet? Mm. No. <laughs> Sean, I didn't. He talked about it, though. I'm telling you, before bar talk... So Lily's working. It's no excuse, but Lily takes my car when Stacy's working. She has her car. Right. So I don't have a car to run to the post office. I called, I spoke to Sean um, Saturday night. Might have been Sunday morning. Um, and I promised him, dude, you're getting them. And I have them. Fins up, man. Is that Adam Fox? No way. 
Dude, we, Welcome, we, Adam. That guy's one of the biggest Dolphin fans from Connecticut you'll ever meet. Oh, goodness. Love Welcome you, to the bar, my guy. See, I hope your family's doing good, bro. Uh, we coached football together when Marky was a little Pop Warner oh, guy. That's awesome. And his son was a little guy. So Welcome, Adam. Now they're both old, and uh, we're sitting here now. So <laughs> Making excuses yeah. to Sean as to why you're not sending him the drinks. It's not an excuse. <laughs> Honestly, man, I promise you, I haven't drank in them. They're coming to you, and I also want to get you some tow truck. I just haven't been to Barron's yet. I'm not going to just send him two cans. I'm sending him a whole box. So That's the kind of friend you are. It'll come out, bro. You know me. I'm good for it. And I've got new Bar Talk stickers so you can plaster them on your car and throughout your community. Do we have some Bar, bar Talk stickers, Jason? Hit us up in DM if you want Bar Talk stickers, too. That's great. Moving on, I was saying, there's been some depressing stuff in the, uh, in the sports world, but you know what's not depressing? Tebow not playing anymore? I was going to go with celebrating love. Oh! <laughs> Dude, let's celebrate love. It's all about you love. You have man. been literally celebrating love my whole life with your wife for many years, but recently a lot, with her too. A lot yes. in the form of a wedding, right? Mm -hmm. Got the bro getting married. I had the honor my brother asked me to be his best man. There it is. So it's a big honor. He's getting married. We have a huge ceremony and fun time. Hey, Dad. Welcome, Welcome Shannon. man. It was great to see you this weekend. Uh, so, yeah, we have a huge shindig out in Bark River, Michigan. We had, a, like, an official church ceremony, right. very quaint for parents and uh, maid of honor and the best man. Um, and my niece and nephew is beautiful, man. So, if tonight we're talking about wedding and love, I'm your guy. He's I'm the primed, guy. I'm baby. How I'm long primed. have you been happily, successfully sharing love <laughs> And experience on the world with Stace. With Stacy, so I met her in 1994, technically 93. Okay. Um, I loved her right away. It took her a little bit, you know. <laughs> uh, but in all honesty, if I say something close to 30 years that she's been the beat of my heart, it's not a lie. Like, it's close to 30 years. We've been married for 23. Um, we were together for years before we got married. So, yeah, man, we're close to 30, and I'm proud of it. She's, you know, it's funny. Um, you start out when you're young. Like, I'm young, immature in college. I'm like, oh, she's so hot. She loves to party. Um, Tebow blocks like the Mets hit. Thank you. Uh, Tebow should be starting an outfield if he can get back from Jacksonville to conclude his Mets contract. Um no way is that depressing. But back to, back to Stacy. <laughs> back to my love life. Uh. <laughs> I have to, guys. He saw a comment. He's like, I got to take that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I not, look, I know Stacy's watching. I'm not trying to embarrass you, hon. I'm not going to get crazy with stuff, but it literally the most important and best thing that's ever happened. Right. Keeps me grounded. And she met me when I was an idiot at 20 years old before I could even legally drink. Um, they're almost 30 years later. I like to think the stupid shit, I'm still that for her and yeah. like the funny guy. But hopefully I've gotten better as a man, a father, a husband. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I've been perfect. I, I wish there were things I could have done with her dating, marriage, with my kids better. But having that person on the ride to do everything together and learn and, like, get better with her, that's been my greatest honor. My kids are my everything. But the fact I'm still married and my wife loves me. Yeah. After all these years. I mean, you've done this podcast for seven months with me. You've been trying to get me out the window. Can you imagine 30 years with this? Yeah, man. Um, so, <laughs> tip of the hat to her, man. She's amazing but it is the one thing in my life i hold incredibly sacred if you will 30 plus years three beautiful kids amazing yes. kids yes it's true success sitting next to me right here in the form of love and relationships and family as the way i observe it my guy and that's what makes it a perfect segment tonight <laughs> for question mark you got the brother Getting ready to take the, the plunge, tying the knot, yeah, if you and will. and it's beautiful to see them, like, do Tons the of people bows out there doing in it the too. church. And, like, the look in the eyes when you can catch that, when, you know, there's the whole, there's the ceremony. But then there's two friends that kind of dig each other. 
and to get those off moments yeah. where you're like, I'm in love, and I know what that look is. Awesome, man. Awesome. So right here. Yeah. For question mark oh. tonight on Bar Talk. All right. What does it take, my guy, in preparation for the big day? You're tying the knot. What do you have to go through? Give the bar talk advice. Give it to them straight. Give it to them funny. Give it to them real. Bar talk style. Wedding so advice. My guy, Mark. preparing for a wedding, preparing for a life with somebody to be successful and move forward. Is this basically what you're getting at? Yeah. Um, all right. Rule number one, I'm going to get back to this often. It's got to be your best friend. It's got to be your best friend. There's going to be times in your relationship that that's super hot out of the shower, I just want to attack that, maybe isn't at the forefront of that day for a multitude of reasons. Maybe There's the person the that's oven. a great Laura Croft Tomb Raider player with you ain't feeling it today. Yeah. you got to always be able to have what they call that anchor. There's got to be something that no matter what, garlic breath, a broken limb, balding, you always can go back to and be like, doesn't matter, that's my best friend. Yep. Because once you have that relationship as a friend, the other stuff's just like cherries on a Sunday. You know what I mean? I so, like that. Um, having the friendship, important. Making sure you're close to their family. Mm. Your spouse's family is the most important thing in their life before they ever met you. Because you marry them too. You do. I mean, you you do. You don't have to give them all the rings, them thank too. God. But your wife... They're not going anywhere. you got to get along with them. is the greatest thing she knows. So you have to find a way, even if her dad's a Yankee fan. <laughs> you got to find a way to find a way to, you know, meet them and, and find a way. Not Don't oh, have them fall in love with you. If you're natural, they will. Yeah. Here's the deal. You have a kid. Your kid's happiness is everything, right? They got to know with a peace of mind. That's not some schmuck that's, you know, messing with my daughter or my son and spending the rest of their life and getting good with the in-laws, man, getting good with their family and friends. Because if you can blend with that network, it makes everything so much more fun. Family events become our family events. Yeah. And it's not I love that. in-laws. It doesn't become, oh, I got to go visit my in-laws. Mm -hmm. It's my family. It's just a gathering. It is, man. You can invite all sides. Yeah. Cohesiveness so in the family is huge. Be a friend. Make sure the family's stuff is solid, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, old school, they're like, oh, if you're marrying a daughter, you better hope her mom and dad love you. It helps. I'm not going to lie. But outside of like the old-fashioned stuff it just makes good human sense yeah you know what i mean um sandy and george i don't want to get emotional i love them like my own mother and father did I, you have to convince them that i love them like that no they know no it. that they know you it. were the guy for states did i have to convince them did you put on the front how did you how did you make Here's sure the that thing, man, they I knew your daughter was their daughter was a good that aunt. knows me knows this to a fault i'm me <laughs> I am. It's that's, probably that's a beautiful costing thing, though. <laughs> me money, jobs, friendships, relationships in my life. But I am who I am. And this is what I am. So they had to learn kind of like, it's funny to this day, if they hear me sneeze, they're getting old now and their hearing's going, they almost have heart attacks. <laughs> and they kind of get pissed. And my mother-in-law, Sandy, who I love, she doesn't ever want to get mad at me. Yeah. So she'll blame George, my father-in-law. <laughs> Jesus, George, why do you got to scream like that when you sneeze? He's like, <laughs> the big guy did it. She goes, oh, then it wasn't that loud. Okay, Mark, I didn't that. That. Um, oh, that's funny. No, they're amazing, dude. So that's important. Again, friendship and family, man. Keep those things close. Your partner is your best friend. The minute that's gone and you can't be friends, guess what, man? The, the passion stuff sometimes drops. The, you know, you like to go dancing and do the cucaracha. Your back goes out. You're not, like, what happens? They get, like, a disease and can't have tacos. Yep. There's shit that could happen. If you have that base of friendship, it'll all work out, man. It I really like will. I like that. And, all right. Stacy, this, you're lucky. This is my last point, Jessica, and anybody that's listening. 
Um, I'm not going to get like offensive here because yeah. we're in a public place, but you know, I talked earlier about oh, getting out of the shower naked. There is a passion thing that's un questionably part of... You have of, to have some kind of attraction well, to your significant other, right? Well, there's something that led you originally yeah. to that person. And it it's wasn't because they cited Shakespeare in the bus. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was something beautiful. A beautiful butt or nice chest or some eyes or a funny laugh or smile. Something that turns you on, right? So, um, Stacy and I, it's funny, we are talking about this just the other day. I told you we've been together 30 years, um, close to... And when we first were dating and had our own apartment, yeah. Sunday morning, because we worked crazy, it was beautiful to roll out of bed and just have like breakfast naked. Hmm. Like you didn't really think, there was no planning. Hmm. Her on one side of the table, me, we're just enjoying coffee, whatever. Do you know, because now we're moving, right? We're packing all this stuff left. And she laughed. We had a couple of mimosas. And she goes, you know, remember like 25 years ago, we would roll out of bed and just be naked having breakfast and never really thought anything of it. I'm like, absolutely, we should try that right now. Absolutely. Dude, we did that Sunday. It was a, it was a little embarrassing. I was worried about who was watching from my slider with binoculars. <laughs> Neighbor Phil, I know it was you. No, but it was amazing. So we're sitting there, I'm a little embarrassed. And my wife's had the greatest compliment ever for me in 30 years. She goes, hey, hon, not only do you look good, but my nipples are starting to feel a little hot and tingly. I was like, see, isn't this great? And by the way, your left one's in the oatmeal, your right one's in the coffee. Um, so keep it loving. Keep the sensualness there. Um, be friends and have some fun. Uh, I like to think Stacy will tell you, for all my faults, once in a while it's nice to come home and know she's going to laugh once in a while. So... Love you, Stace. Humor goes a long way, doesn't it, pal? <laughs> it has to. With this guy, it does. <laughs> oh, and God bless you, Stace, for putting up with this. Oh. Cheers, buddy. Chin, chin. Bar talk marriage, pre-marriage advice for my guy, Mark. Oh. So Jesse's saying, move it on. That's Top true. three with Mark and me. We're continuing on with the wedding stuff, folks. It's going to get the opposite side you gave the fantastic recommendations how to keep a wholesome relationship going keep the friendship make sure that you're entwined with the family keep that going got right? but the big day comes around sometimes hi Subway frog welcome saucy, saucy frog I welcome to the bar sometimes i almost said savory frog like, <laughs> who's eating frogs and saying they're savory sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> sometimes the wedding itself, you got to kind of mentally prepare for. And there are some rules and regulations Bar Talk's going to give you tonight on top three with Mark and me. Rules and regulations, three of them from each of us, not to do at the wedding. Number three, two, one, starting with my guy Mark. Go. Number three, do not skip a meal or any sort of hydration. Mm, Very yeah. easy, especially mm -hmm. as a bride or a groom. And obviously, I can only speak for one side, but your day is pulling you in 50 different directions. It goes super fast. People want to take pictures. So like, Guess what? There's food and there's beverages, and you're going to want to hang out, do a couple shots, have some drinks, all the fun celebratory stuff, and you're going to think the food, now nah, get to that. I still got 200 people to hug and get through. If there's a maid of honor or a best man on this and you're coming up to a wedding, make sure you got your groom and brides hooked up. Make sure there's a little tray, whether it's mm -hmm. a charcuterie tray with cheese and crackers, some water, because there's going to be a lot of champagne and shots and everybody's going to want to have a beer with the bride and the groom. Make sure you stay hydrated, throw some waters in there. Definitely Great eat call. something super important. Great call. Jesse, top three. Don't ever give don't ever give a toast when you've been drinking. Ooh, Boom. don't give a toast after drinking heavily, Jesse says. That's her number three. Fantastic advice. No it really doesn't go well ever. <laughs> no, it's not a good idea. She's like, first hand experience. Hmm. No? I, I don't know. You know what my number three is, buddy? <clears throat> a little personal. Don't forget to wear underwear. Oh, huge. Witnessed this one. 
If you get a little bit frisky on the dance floor and you do a couple spins and the old dress goes up or oh my God. whatever, and you forget to wear undies for the uh, groom that night, what's that? <laughs> the wedding party also sees the show that evening. Not good. Don't forget undies. Number two, my guy. Well, things not to do at a wedding. Things absolutely not to do at a wedding. Do not order a hot air balloon. I what? made that mistake, yep. How does this work into because, it? Because, man, I thought, how amazing, right? Everybody's like, walk down the aisle, walk down the aisle. No, no. Hot air balloon into the aisle. I called three days before my wedding for that. $500. I'm like, done. Handle it. This is real. For real. The day, the this morning This is Bar Talk original wedding, information. Guys, like, we're on our way. It's, we had to change the price. It's $2,000. On the day of my wedding, I'm like, how do you do that? Insane, right? He goes, I'll tell you exactly why. Inflation. <laughs> he did it. Don't order air balloon. <laughs> that was good. Dude. That was good. I think I yelled into the microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Inflation. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. I fall for all of his every week, don't I? Oh, Jesse, so, number two. Things so not great. to do at a wedding. <laughs> don't ever show up to a wedding hungry. Boom. What Fo a great piece there you of go. advice. Jesse says don't follow or don't show up to a wedding hungry. Piggybacking on my guys, uh, you got to eat. Got to Minimum drink two in and out double style. Ooh. Like animal like style double doubles. Go yep. Saturate. Correct. Correct. Five o'clock ain't nobody sitting down to a piece of meatloaf. Even if Two double doubles from In and Out. What time do you take that pregame dump? Oh, there's no pregame dump on your wedding day. Oh, you got to keep that all in. It absorbs everything. All that's day. like a combat dump. And at then that point. the first together nude with the bathroom door open in the honeymoon suite. Kaboom, Bobby! No, I'm just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard. I never heard. Of <laughs> no number. pun intended. <laughs> My number two, my number two, anyway, my number two, things not to do at a wedding, don't be the guy or gal in the corner just making things uncomfortable, <laughs> judging the decor, <laughs> checking out the bride's side boob, uh, you know, judging the gambling problem from the groom. I don't know what you're into, whatever. Just don't be the judgmental person in the I'm corner, sure right? boob. Oh my gosh, Mike. Oh my Hello. goodness. Hi. I'm talking Is about that. Is this the bourbon barrel aged? <laughs> oh, hells yes. Oh. My guy, Mike, over here. The audience here. can only take so many talking heads for half an this hour. This is plus. amazing. What yeah. a treat. So there you go. Mike, talk about Look it. What this. do we got here, buddy? We got Turn of Darkness Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels or weighing in about 11 and a half or 12%. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Mama Sita. It's some gorgeousness. You are too kind, Shin. my guy. This is amazing. What a treat. This is the hospitality is awesome. that you get over here at Duckfoot. This is Come check them out every time you have a chance. Talk. But yeah, just whip that. As we both sip them. Yeah, I know. I did the same thing. Golly. <laughs> yeah, oh, my goodness. Like crazy. Sir, that what might be the best sip of my week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, don't thank me. Too thank kind. Matt Aiken. Thank you so much. And the whole group team. Matt Aiken and Matt. the whole group. The this whole team at Duckfoot over here. Thank amazing. you, Mike. Appreciate you, my guy. So the mm. the stout I had before this was just the regular turn of darkness. That was the last one I had. This is a bourbon barrel aged oh, version wow. of it. My God, what a treat! Woo! If you can't see that, come treat yourself over at Duckfoot. Wow, that's good. And if you, can, if you can see behind me, right over here, during COVID, quick shout out, all of those beers back there, those are thanks to you all. Those are the beers that have been mass produced, pushing out of Duckfoot during COVID. You can't sip something during the COVID in the Duckfoot, so you create these fantastic can line right behind me. And that's what they were pushing out to include this gorgeous sip right here. God, it's so oh good, isn't Lord. it, man? Thank you, Mike. Thank yeah. you, Duckfoot. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Brett, yes. and the whole team over at Duckfoot for having us tonight. What this a has treat. been great. Oh my gosh. I don't even know where I was at. I was talking about uh, number my number two. Number one. Number one, Mark. Number Things one. not to do at a wedding. It's a two-parter. 
Okay. Never hit on the bride. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. Ever at the wedding. Mm -hmm. Or say bad stuff about the in-laws. Mm -hmm. Those are two recipes that if you forget everything else we told you, you don't hit on the bride, you Lock don't make those fun in of the in-laws, you're going to get through the wedding just fine. I like that. I love that, in fact. It's always going to bite you in the ass. Literally. Correct. Yeah. Jesse, your number one thing not to do at a wedding. What you get? Yeah, don't complain about the wedding. It's somebody else's show. Yeah. It's somebody else's day. Let them enjoy their day. And if you didn't want to go, you shouldn't have Don't feel pressure into going. I don't want anybody. I've never been married, but I wouldn't want anybody at my wedding that didn't want to be there that's going to sit Correct. in the corner and bitch and moan and whatever else. So come to have fun or just don't show up. Is it just safe to say, anytime that it's somebody else's day, check your complaints at the door? Yeah. Well, of course. Remember, at the end of the day, it's not about you. Right. It's about the beautiful bride and the handsome groom and this bond that they're going to have for a lifetime. So if you're, if you're honored enough to be included in that day, mm -hmm. man, find a lock for the lip, put a smile on there, laugh at their jokes, Get out there, dance a little, enjoy the bar. Man, the wedding's a beautiful day. And hit in and out on the way home. Boom. There you go, <laughs> Jess. Hit out on the way home. <laughs> My number one, you started off, make sure you eat something, make sure Got you to. sip something before you get dehydrated and it's a long day. We all get that. Piggybacking on uh, Jesse, don't overconsume anything. Don't overconsume anything. Don't eat too much of the buffet. Yep. Don't drink too much of the open bar yep. like Jesse's talking about. Don't dance too much with the bride or whatever right. bridesmaid. Don't overconsume. That's my number one. Correct. Enjoy your day, but uh, <clears throat> it's not your day. It's somebody else's, so enjoy your time. How about that? Is that better? Remember, it's all for love, man. You know, in that this day springs not only m great memories for the bride and groom, but I'm thir almost 25 years married. I still have relatives that reach out and go, dude, your wedding still was the best party I'd ever been to. So it's a great piece for the husband and wife, but it's also a great memory for you. So go there, show up, be somebody that's a, a conduit of love. Yeah. Because guess what, 25 years from now, the bride and groom are gonna remember you were there and had a great time. And oh, that's, that's the legit. best gift they'll ever get that's legit that's fun yeah man <laughs> and you okay. know what? it also brings a lot of trust yeah that's true if you're long somebody that goes to a wedding and doesn't complain that also is like you know what i'm so glad i invited them that was such a pleasure and again it's all about love they came to support me on my Correct. day it's not about them right it's about them hard to find you know what i mean hard to find in this world uh, my guy, Mark, we have to share the news of the world. Sometimes it comes in a lot of different directions, weird, funky, doesn't matter. But we here at the Bar Talk, we got to share it with you all. Weird news of the week. There's been a lot of it. Woo! What'd you find this week? I have a weird, new, weird news article coming out of Portugal. What do you have this week? Please tell. because mine. I can't be... share what I have. I mine's... have to go. You want to be last? All right. So I'm going to um, I'm going to start my news of the weird like this. If I start, I might offend. It's going to be a rant. I love rants. I don't. I hate bringing that to this beautiful podcast. Let me turn the hat back. But I read this news on the 13th of August, and I was like, okay, I definitely know what my news of the weird is. Matthew, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. Do you know what they call the deliberate modification of the characteristics of an organism by manipulating its genetic material? I blacked out like three words ago. What'd you say? They call that genetic engineering. Mm. Have you ever heard of this? No. Let me, let me fill you in, folks. I'm done with the genetic engineering. You're done. I'm done. For the last five or six years, once in a while, you'll pick up a newspaper. Oh, they've genetically engineered soy or milk or corn. 
zucchinis, flavor saver tomatoes. Not those kind, kids. <laughs> Landmine detecting plants. Vegetables. Vegetables, yes. And you know what? I'm kind of fine with all of that. Okay. Kind of fine okay. with all that. All right. But, please, Lord, can we stop with the Dolly the sheep, the glow-in-the-dark mice, <laughs> growing cows that fart one-third the way their ancestors did, silk-spinning goats, super-buff and muscly pigs, and venomous cabbage. Can we stop? This all leads me to this damn headline I read. Bro, you're not going to believe it. Scientists tweak the daddy long leg spider genes to create daddy short legs. Why this are is... we... Why in God's name are we taking something to reinvent that nobody wanted that? I'm not a spider guy. So I've been moving this last week. Do you know the other day, dude, I killed a spider on my ceiling that was this big with my dolphin slipper? <laughs> Look, I don't mind spiders, but the minute they go on the ceiling with my dolphin slipper, out things got to go. Get them out of it. So, yeah, no, I can't take it. And this thing was all about, well, if we take their legs and shrink them, we're going to learn more about why they have long legs. No, you know what it's led to? Now they want to take, um, they, they, whatever they did for this science reversed, and the result was that six of the animal's eight legs got about a third of their normal unengineered co-parts, and they weren't using them to walk. They were using them as PD palp, which is used for handling food. So now you're going to have a bunch of legless, fat, daddy long legs that can't even get up in a corner. And when you hit them, they're going to spill full of goo. <laughs> so they're talking about using this test for spider fangs and pinchers. Um, but can we just stop with the hybriding and the genetically modifying stuff? I'm done. What? There's my news and my rant. Poor daddy long legs. Why are they, is there, like who thinks of this stuff, man? How do we get over COVID? Let's put our energy there. Instead of let's pluck six legs off of a daddy long leg, screw with the embryo so they can have tiny little legs. And we can call them daddy short legs. We don't need this. Not to mention, how many dads do you know that want a shorter leg? You know no. what I'm saying? Baboom. Correct. We were talking about marriage in 30 years. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Seriously though. Nobody farms plants on the planet or the ecosystem hasn't created that animal. There's no need for it. Agreed. Jesse's saying Jess. Mark's saying, why? Why? There's no need. Why? There's no need. There's no anyway. No. Jesse just uh segued into my weird news of the week. Can't wait to hear it. She said cycle of life. Well, Right here on the bar talk. Whew, the weird news of the week comes from Portugal. Wait a minute. Do you know they sport they speak Portuguese there? It's the cycle of life. No, wrong sorry. <laughs> weird news of the week coming from Portugal. Oh goodness. A woman in Portugal who recently gave birth. Birth? Birth is good. I knew exactly what you meant there. She also gave birth. Wow, mm. a two for one. A woman in Portugal who recently gave birth was complaining about armpit pain, my guy. Nobody wants to give birth and have armpit pain. Nonetheless, doctors start investigating. She says this thing in her right armpit was so swollen it it was causing her to stay up at night. She couldn't she couldn't concentrate on her baby. In the armpit? It gets interesting. Oh god. So doctors start investigating this swollen lump in her armpit. After several tests and examinations, they find out the woman's armpit is not an armpit. <gasps> it's a breast. Fully functional breast. You hear you heard it right here on Bar Talk, folks. Yeah, folks, 
Oh my god. You heard it right here on Bar Talk. He's got a reaction straight I love it. <laughs> you heard it right here on Bar Talk. A woman with a fully functional breast in her armpit was diagnosed in Portugal with something rare called polymastia, a condition in which accessory breast tissue develops amongst the mammary ridge. We talked about this on the last uh, bar talk, right? The no. mammaries. Anyway, something like 2.6% of all women have this condition and some even develop, ready for this, super nipples. One super nipple case in 1999 an 18-year-old woman had to regularly pump her polymestia super nipple to relieve the pressure. Wait, are you saying it lactated? This woman was complaining of pressure in her armpit. They investigated. It was a fully functional breast that was lactating. I can't make this stuff up. When I read this, I say to myself, <laughs> Mark, when I read about the super nips, is this possible? It is. I thought to myself, first of all, if this is possible, it's truly amazing that the female body can adjust biologically to support a child provided with nutrients in a unfamiliar area. It's truly fantastic and beautiful. Unfamiliar really? area. Yeah, under the armpits, unfamiliar. Right? I guess that makes breastfeeding in public a little less embarrassing, right? Well, we'll talk about that. Uh, Ready? Right? Take a little arm picket. Nonetheless, it also got me thinking this, you know? Okay. <laughs> Did I just read that 2.6% of women have a secret breast hidden in their in their armpit? <laughs> wow. Are you kidding me? I gotta know more about this. I investigate further. How? How I does reached, one investigate dude, further? I reached out to our bar talk listener who's an av Avid listener of the program, Mr. Ru Mrs. Ruby Booby. You know her. Ruby Booby? Dude, she has one of these treasure chests in her armpit. No pun intended, or maybe <laughs> so it I is. So I sit down with Ruby Booby two days ago after I read this story with a full thing of Oreos for a great conversation. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's really only one question to ask, though. Like, There's multiple, but go ahead. When, you, when you're sitting down with... A situation like this you have to ask like what is it like sexually right for the bar talk I had to ask Ruby what is it like sexually you know what she says to me dude the men loved it they get to be nip picky <laughs> so that's fantastic so Ruby I'm a big fan I loved our conversation and all you ladies out there I'm interested and he's not as nip picky as you would expect. That's outstanding. How did I sit here for 20 minutes and didn't even think that was coming out? I'm like pissed at myself. That's amazing. Hey, ladies, 2.6% of you in the world, I dig it. <laughs> the other 97.4% run! Run as far as you can! <laughs> Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Moving right along, last section of the night is called Bar Talk. Anything goes. <laughs> Do you have any good nipple jokes? <laughs> no. I wish I did, man. I'm like, I'm floored. I don't know if it's hot in here. Or... <laughs> anyway, anything goes, last section yeah. called Bar Talk. Within reason, producer Jess, you have anything? We're here at Duck Foot Brewing Company. Absolutely fantastic place. So wonderful. Everything on the menu is great. Come check them out. Tonight's Tuesday, Taco Tuesday outside. Two beers, two fish tacos for 20 bucks? Get out of here. Last call for bar talk. Jesse, what you got? I just want to comment on the fish tacos. Does that mean they're amazing? Fish tacos are great. Yep. Yum. Really good. They were good. Mark, what you got? Last call, bud. I got nothing. It was fun tonight, man. It's great to be here at a place I've never been. Tried a variety of amazing beer. Had lots of people come in and say hello. And we got to talk about love, man. Which, you know what, at the end of the day, can't we all talk about that a little bit more Amen, instead brother. of the depressing shit that's all over TV? So when you leave here, you have homework, Bar Talk audience. Love someone. Man. Hey, I love that. What? I love that even some more, buddy. Well done. I can dig it. 
my last call for tonight. Shout out to ourbackyardpresents.com. I have gotten involved with a local organization in my community. We're doing a mystery diner theater. Ooh. It's in support of, you know, all, I'm all about community, baby. You have a community event, you let the bar talk. You let the Matthew know. I want to know about it. I want to support. I love beautiful fundraisers. I got my hands on one recently. They're supporting an organization called Hoof Prints. Oh, H-U-F-F-P-R-I-N-T. Said it last week. And they do equestrian. My Spanish is good tonight. I told Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Therapy for children for every all ages. They work with horses. As a South Dakota guy, I know the power, the magic it comes that comes from working with horses. So big support of that. Um, and they're doing a backyard. Our Backyard Presents is doing a mystery diner theater that I'm a part of. And it starts in September. If you want, head over to ourbackyardpresents.com and buy tickets right now. Pre-order tickets. You can support great organizations. You can support me. You can make fun of me because it's super comedy. It's roasting the whole time. Come make fun of me. I don't care. Head on over there. Support a great organization. That's what Bar Talk's all about. That's what they're all about. So that's my last shout out of the night before right back there. Jesse, this doesn't happen without you. Producer Jess, a Bar Talk cheers. Thank you cheers, so much for doing everything Jess. that you do. Great job. We can't do without you. All of our troops coming home, we love you. It's bar talk that we enjoy, but it's bar, well, it's bar banter that motivates a lot of us to keep doing the hard stuff that you guys are doing. So we appreciate you. Please come home safely. Support each other along the way. We had a couple of uh, pretty close losses last week. I love you. Families. Here we are. Appreciate everything that you're doing. So with that being said, my guy Mark, till next week, we're out.